If you study the old world long enough, you start to notice the methods that never died. One of the most reliable is an Ice Age fire technique that still performs today, even when modern gear fails. Before we break it down, make sure you're subscribed to Warpaths of Europe so you never miss the deep, practical history that actually teaches you something. Now, let's get straight into it. How Ice Age groups created dependable flame with the percussion method. The oldest proven spark-making technique wasn't a bow drill, and it wasn't friction at all. It was percussion fire. Ice Age hunter-gatherers carried two essentials, a hard, silica-rich stone, such as flint or chert, and a high-carbon iron mineral like pyrite or marcasite. When struck together with precision, they shaved off tiny hot metal particles. Those particles ignited the fine tinder they prepared long before striking the first spark. This method is still one of the most dependable ways to produce fire without cordage, dry wood, or modern tools. The Ice Age groups who used it understood that spark production was only half the equation. The real skill was preparing tinder that caught the microsparks instantly. They used fungus, such as amadou from hoof fungus, dried plant fibres, powdered inner bark, and even scraped fat-soaked fibres when available. The combination created a tinder matrix so sensitive that a single glowing speck could grow into a usable ember. Why this method still gives reliability in harsh, wet and cold regions. European Ice Age climates were brutal. Many regions stayed damp, cold and wind-beaten. The percussion method survived because it isn't dependent on perfectly dry materials the way friction fire is. A high carbon stone will still spark even in cold rain and a properly kept tinder kit stays dry inside clothing or wrapped in hide. This is the same logic modern survivalists follow. Control the tinder, and you control the fire. A modern practitioner can reproduce this by carrying a small tin of tinder made from charred cloth, pulverised inner bark, and dried fungus. Striking flint against a steel striker produces the same effect pyrite once did. And you know, when conditions soak everything else, the flint and steel combination continues to deliver consistent sparks. How the original method worked step by step in field conditions. Ice Age groups began by sitting low, shielding their bodies around the tinder bundle. They struck downward with the pyrite at a slight angle, directing sparks into a nest of fine fibres. Once a speck glowed, they nursed it with controlled breath, until the ember grew large enough to transfer to a thicker bundle. From there they fed slivers of wood and dry grasses, until the flame stood on its own. This technique is not theoretical. It has been demonstrated in archaeological reconstructions using pyrite nodules found in Upper Paleolithic sites. The process is slow for beginners, but once the rhythm is learned, it becomes a two-minute job. Now, how can you use this Ice Age technique today in real survival situations? Imagine yourself in a soaked forest where no friction method works the percussion approach becomes your lifeline. A flint shard, a steel striker, and a dry tinder kit fit in any pocket. If you want to test the Ice Age version, you can substitute steel with pyrite, which is still easy to source. Hike with a small pouch containing amadou or charred tinder and strike over it, just as the early Europeans did. And if you happen to run a reenactment camp, this method draws attention 
because it shows authentic prehistoric skill in action. Backcountry hunters often carry a flint striker set because it still functions after a lighter empties or a matchbox gets wet. Even on long treks, you can maintain your tinder by drying fungus or bark near the evening fire, just as Ice Age travellers once did. Let's explore how this ancient skill strengthens modern historical understanding. Any historian who practices this firsthand gains insight into the rhythm of early life. Fire wasn't a convenience, it was a decisive advantage. When you create flame the same way they did, you understand the discipline behind survival and how much planning went into every journey, every camp, and every cold night on the European plains. If you value deep, practical history like this, subscribe to Warpaths of Europe and share this guide so more serious researchers and survivalists can learn techniques that have endured since the Ice Age.